Every corner of the earth today is teeming with life. From the poles to the equator, from deep caves to high air currents, from tropical forests to volcanoes living creatures, even if only in the form of primitive organisms, can be found everywhere. Animals, plants, fungi and bacteria have adapted to the most extreme conditions. But was it always like this on our planet? The Mystify presents Journey to Earth's Past Before Dinosaurs For most of its existence, Earth was not hospitable to life. Let's travel back to the Archean era, the earliest period known to us for the presence of life. This era began about 4 billion years ago and lasted roughly 1.5 billion years. During this time, Earth had just undergone the late heavy bombardment. Thousands of tons of rocky debris, remnants from the formation of the solar system, rained down on the planet, shattering the thin basalt crust that had recently formed on the surface of molten magma. After this significant stage, Earth again reshaped its surface, forming the first lithosphere. About a billion years later, it became home to the first living organisms. At that time, Earth had a relatively smooth surface. Tectonic plates, which create mountain ranges through their movements, did not yet exist. The Archean atmosphere contained almost no oxygen, and nitrogen concentrations were much lower than they are today. Earth was enveloped in a thick mixture of water vapor and carbon dioxide, with high levels of sulfur oxides, phosphorus, and other reactive chemical elements. The sun shone much dimmer than it does today. Its luminosity was about one third less, making our planet seem rather bleak. The moon was closer to Earth, resulting in shorter days, only about 10 hours long. Tidal waves at that time were colossal, reaching heights from several dozen to 300 meters. As Earth cooled, water in the atmosphere began to condense, forming rains. Initially, it collected in small pools in low-lying areas. This water was acidic, salty, and extremely hot, boiling in some places, reminiscent of modern geysers. Paradoxically, this harsh environment became the cradle for the evolution of primitive life forms. The first organisms were anaerobic and relied on other energy sources, as oxygen necessary for respiration was not yet present in the atmosphere. Archean organisms could not yet swim. They required a substrate for survival, thus the biosphere of that time represented a thin, slimy film, no more than a millimeter thick, spread across the bottom of the acidic and hot ocean in coastal zones. As the planet continued to cool, sea levels rose and the atmosphere became less dense, while the sun gradually increased in size. The coastal zone, where conditions for life were more favorable, also expanded. By the end of the Archean era, the biosphere existed as a narrow strip along the coastline and some oases on the seabed near active volcanoes, while land, rivers and much of the open ocean remained almost lifeless. Another problem arose during this time. The lack of decomposers, organisms that feed on dead matter, hampered the evolution of life. Dead organisms accumulated in depressions on the seafloor due to gravity and ocean currents. After hundreds of millions of years, these accumulations were transformed by nature into what we know today as oil deposits. Around three and a half billion years ago, organisms emerged that were to change Earth beyond recognition. Some bacteria developed the ability to perform photosynthesis, producing oxygen. A billion years later, at the transition from the Archean to the Proterozoic era, their evolution led to the most significant extinction event in Earth's history, known as the Great Oxygenation Event, among other names. The ancient Earth's atmosphere was rich in methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Methane was actively oxidized, turning into carbon dioxide and water. As methane concentrations in the atmosphere decreased, the planet's temperature dropped, leading to the Huronian glaciation, the largest ice age in Earth's history. Starting 2.4 billion years ago and lasting 300 million years, research indicates that in some areas, ice sheets reached the equator, nearly turning the planet into an ice ball. It took Earth 1.5 billion years to transition from scorching lava fields to vast icy deserts. The Proterozoic era lasted from 2.5 billion to 540 million years ago. Life continued to exist despite the cold, and evolution, although slowed, continued its course. 
Nevertheless, the land remained lifeless and living organisms concentrated in coastal areas near the equator. But what was happening on the continent? Although life had not yet covered the land, the continents were experiencing something different and remarkable in their own right. Near the continent, deposits of metal ores and new rocks were forming. During the Proterozoic era, sections of land alternately took on different appearances. They were either covered by vast glaciers or transformed into rocky deserts. It is hard to imagine, but just 500 million years ago, much of our planet resembled a Martian desert. Fortunately for all the inhabitants of our planet, the sun became brighter and warmer. Eventually, the ice melted. 542 million years ago, the Phanerozoic era began, which translates from Greek as the era of visible life. This era was characterized by periods of active evolution of various species, alternating with mass extinctions. These were the main events, but what was the world like in those times? At the beginning of the Paleozoic era, a significant part of the Earth's landmass merged into a huge supercontinent named Gondwana. This colossus was located in the southern hemisphere, spanning more than 100 million square kilometers and characterized by complex terrain. It included present-day territories of Africa, South America, Antarctica, Australia, the Indian subcontinent, and some other regions. In the early Silurian period, there was a noticeable increase in the appearance of plants in tidal zones and near rivers, especially in tropical areas. Although the diversity of marine flora and fauna was increasing, most marine organisms still preferred to stay near the shorelines. During the Devonian period, which began 420 million years ago and lasted until 358 million years ago, the zone of photosynthesis in the ocean expanded. Although the depths for this process were limited to 50 meters, which is 10 times less than today, at the same time, the first organisms capable of decomposing organic material appeared. This led to the emergence of organisms that fed on decomposition remains. The next period saw the Carboniferous Era, lasting from 358 to 299 million years ago. By the beginning of this time, most of the tropical zones were overgrown with tree-like ferns. However, Dense forests had not yet spread widely because there were no organisms capable of decomposing dead trees. This meant that they did not break down after dying, not passing nutrients to their descendants. Thus, huge trunks remained untouched, and phosphorus, an essential element for plants, remained unavailable. Over time, lush greenery gave way to vast accumulations of dead trees that covered extensive areas of land. Later, these masses became the source of rich coal deposits, which are still widely used by humanity in various industries. The Carboniferous period was followed by the Permian period, lasting from 299 to 252 million years ago. The first amphibians began to conquer the land, and plants spread, conquering the subtropics. The sea remained inhabited only in shallow areas near the shores. The Permian period ended with one of the most devastating mass extinctions in the history of living organisms. According to some estimates, up to 96% of marine species and 73% of terrestrial species perished. The exact causes of this global catastrophe are still unknown. The Triassic period of the Mesozoic era was a time of rapid recovery, which opened new horizons for life on Earth. For the first time on this planet, temperate zones could enjoy forests. Another significant event was the appearance of cyanobacteria in the seas, which were the ancestors of modern forms. They no longer needed a substrate for habitation, so photosynthesizing microorganisms quickly spread across the surface of the world's oceans. The Mesozoic era, covering the period from 250 to 66 million years ago, is divided into three main periods, Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. This era was the time of the flourishing of dinosaurs, perhaps the most famous prehistoric creatures. Depicting these epochs, it is easy to fall into the illusion that the Earth was enveloped in tropical forests stretching from the poles to the equator. In reality, this was not the case. Yes, forests spread to the northern latitudes, but only because the average temperature on the planet was significantly higher than it is now. 
Meanwhile, equatorial regions suffered from drought. Despite the rapid spread of forests across the planet's surface, there were still vast swamps and deserts for a long time. These deserts were not always hot and arid as we tend to imagine, but could also be temperate, cool, and even humid. Without grassy plants, soils could not hold on to rocky slopes. Bare rocks were only home to lichens. Flowering plants began to multiply only by the middle of the Cretaceous period. Eventually, evolution produced a unique creature, the only living being capable not only of adapting to the environment, but also of changing it. A being that destroys other species for profit or pleasure. A being that turns vast territories into wastelands in pursuit of selfish goals. This is Homo sapiens, or today's human.